get to step six and seven, we begin each week, we do a review. And the first step is the foundation of recovery. And we said we was going to do three things. Basically, number first, what is the problem? And it's an Alcoholics Anonymous that we can find the exact nature of our problem. In the big book, Dr. Silkworth explains the problem is twofold. We have a physical problem, a physical allergy, and a mental obsession. And these two things together make us powerless over alcohol. And I think as we say in great detail, when I come to Alcoholics Anonymous, I didn't understand the exact nature of my problem. I knew that alcohol had something to do with it, obviously. And I think that many alcoholics realize that, that alcohol is involved, but how is alcohol involved? In order to solve a problem, we have to get to the exact nature of it so we can deal with it. And for many years, you know, I thought all I had to do was just to quit drinking. And I knew after many years that I couldn't drink. I didn't understand. I hadn't heard the physical allergy. He hadn't explained it to me in great detail. But when he came and explained it to me in detail, I learned that I had a craving each time I drank. And that was abnormal and never occurred in the average tempered drinker. And therefore, you know, I finally they explained to me why I couldn't drink safely. I can drink, but I can't drink safely. If I took a drink tonight, I, I would experience this phenomenal craving. The same thing would occur. But that's just part of my problem. Then understanding that was fine. But the main problem of the alcoholic sin is in his mind rather than the body. It wasn't the fact that I couldn't drink. My main problem was I couldn't quit drink, quit trying to drink. You know, the alcoholic, he talks about this obsession. And as we go into step two, it talks about restore us to sanity. And once we learned that these two things were powerless, then our step two talks about a power working on this obsession. You know, restoring us to sanity. It says when it comes to alcohol, in all other areas, the alcoholic is, we can make good sound judgments in our lives. Right, we go to work, we, we, uh, I mean, we have alcoholics doing some great things. I mean, they, they're involved in all facets of life, doing many, many complicated things. You know, it's hard to see how a guy could go to the moon, <laughs> and he, he but he, could, he has, didn't have such enough not to drink something that was killing him. You know what I mean? But this is man. You know, we, we have great minds, but when it comes to alcohol, we're quite insane. Uh, they didn't say we was crazy, and insane don't mean you're all gone. It just means you ain't all there. You know, we got a little, <laughs> we got one little piece missing. When it comes to alcohol, that's the little piece. And we says we come to believe that a power greater than ourselves, and I love the word, can restore us to sanity. You know, we can put this back. So power, working on the obsession, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves. We're powerless, and step two says this, power is the answer. And if we have these two, we have come to these two conclusions, and this is progress because this puts the alcoholic in position for something for the first time in his life. You know, from through the, through the first 100 people that this was passed down, this information was passed down, down, down from them to us. And for the first time, it, it gives the alcoholic an opportunity. <coughs> for the first time, if an alcoholic has these two sets of information, if he arrives, if he sees that this is his, if his problem is powerless, and if he can see, he can see, he can believe that this power can restore him to sanity, then he's in position for our recovery. And this is, this is problem solving. The first thing you do on a problem is find what is the problem, what is the solution, and then you, then you lay out a plan program of action to find this power. And, it, and the first step in this is step three. And step three says we stand at the turning point. And we make a decision. We choose between this side or this side. And that's quite obvious. You know, and it says that this is each, each individual decision. And we have to choose, make a decision. And if we make this decision for this power, 
then quite naturally we have to turn over our power. He says we have to turn over our will if we want to find this power. You know, and we have, uh, you know, we have self-will. Uh, we've been living off of this thing all our lives. Um, and we alcoholics are, uh, we, we have a lot of that, by the way. And that seems to be the root of our problem. So we make a decision to turn our world and our lives with care of God as we understand him. And then we go to work uh, on removing the things that block us off from this power. Uh, and so the next steps, the first step in doing that, after we make the decision, it says the decision is very vital and critical, but it would have no permanent effect unless we go to work to remove the things that block us off. And so in step four, we start, we start the inventory process of identifying these things. And this is, this is the process of step four. And once we identify these things in step four, we're going to then talk to another individual about them and refine them a little bit in step five. And then after we talk to another individual about them in step six, we're going to become willing to let them go. And in step seven, we're going to ask God to remove them. We can see, see how these steps interact, one little gradual process. And the whole, the whole foundation of six and seven as we get to the night is step four. Because as we went through step four, we had to list and analyze. And it says we had to find the value of these things. It's like taking a commercial inventory. We compared ourselves with a, with a uh, business. And we are a business, we said. And we are... Um, we, got, we are about the business of staying sober, or of being happy and contentment. And this is the most important business in human life. Uh, it's not in, uh, uh, you know, most of the time we forget about our business and get involved in everybody else's business and get involved in our job or get involved in our profession and forget all about, forget about our business. And I never did really in my life uh, do much about my business. I always fool with everybody else's business. <laughs> and a business that takes no inventory will go broke. And it did. I, it went broke. And if you're drinking alcohol or taking drugs to, to, to prop up your business, you got a bad, you got some bad business. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, it, this something, it just ain't right. So I had to in this inventory process, I went through and, and with these sheets that were in the big book, using the outline in the big book, I inventoried the, the grosser handicaps. And these talked about resentments, and we listed and analyzed those resentments. And in those uh, resentments, we saw uh, what people did to us and who they were and what caused it. And we saw which part of self was affected. Then we saw what within our character allowed these things to happen. And as we examine that more, with more and more, we found out it was not to other people's fault. You know, most of every, every resentment that we ever have and every fear and every harm we do to other people is caused by that inherent characteristic in, that's in us. You know, that's what set the ball rolling. You know, it's the thing that within us that actually triggered that resentment. But over the years, we have blamed that on people so long that, you know, when someone does something, we blame it on them, blame it on them, and justify ourselves. We, you know, I was just there being good, and they did that to me. But the truth was, you know, we set the ball rolling. And we played this over and over so much, justifying ourselves, uh, you know, excusing our wrong and involving other people that we can hardly see that. But when we go through the inventory process, we, we get these things down in paper. We see the exact nature of our problem. In step five, we can discuss that with another human being. You know, the exact nature of my resentments was my own selfishness, dishonesty, inconsideration. My, my own frightness. These character defects, that was the exact nature of my fears. That was the exact nature of the harm that I caused other people. It was never their fault. And see, we were created as God. We were created by God to be free people. We were created free whether we like it or not. You know, we, we give our lives away, but we were created free. Now, God didn't create us to where our happiness is in the hand of someone else's. It's in our own hands. But as we give our lives away on a day-to-day -day basis, 
as we start getting into resentments and fear, we turn our lives over to the thing we resent. We turn our lives over to the thing we fear. You know, I had a lot of people I didn't like, and I just turned my life to them every morning. And we get so good at this. You know, alcoholics don't have to work in resentments. You know, in fact, you'd be automatic. Yeah, I got so where um, I could do. I could see people driving down the street and just resenting them, didn't even know them. You know, I mean, I could, you know, if they looked at me, I could say, I know what they're saying. <laughs> and if they spoke, said, how are you? I said, they didn't mean that. And if they didn't speak, I was mad. You know what I mean? And, and we, we just, uh, you know, we just live off of these resentments. And we live off of these fears. We can't see anything, you know, any other way. So, once we get these things down on paper, then we take this to another person. And this is a essential thing. I think beautiful how step five lays right in there between the inventory and this going to work process. Because, you know, if we just did the inventory, we might make, you know, we haven't been honest with ourselves all our lives. We said that we talked about the alcoholic can't be honest with himself. He, he has to be a con artist to be an alcoholic. There's no way you can have any honesty and destroy your life like we do. So we, we will con everybody else in the greatest con job we've done on ourselves. And so why, how can it possible in step four, even though we made this decision to turn our will and our life to the care of God, we, we have to have, you know, to the, the do the inventory, we have to take step three. I mean, there's no way an alcoholic can take step four without taking step three. Because he has to have something to go through this facade and this conning. How could he take a searching, fearless, immoral inventory without step three? But even with that, just the beginning, he still can't be as honest with himself. He's as honest with, as he can be at that time. And that's all, that's all we can be today, as honest as we can be. We're not honest. We're honest as we can be. And we only know, and the truth is just as good as I see it. You know what I mean? But, so we, uh, we have to carry this to another individual. And in step five, we carry this to another individual. He can look at these things, and he is not involved in our life. And he's also been through the same process. You know, if we go to someone who's been through the program, knowledgeable, our sponsor, he's went through this process. And we thank God we have many people around today who can go over, these, go over our inventory with us. And as they go through our inventory, they can look at these things. You know, they, they weren't involved in them. And I'm sure that as they go through the inventory, they're going to make some changes in our inventory. You know, they're going to say, well, they're going to question you about this. This resentment here, do you think that was caused by this part of self or was caused by this part of self? And I'm sure that they're going to improve on our inventories. The changes are they're going to find, well, this character effect was involved in this one. And they're going to get to the exact nature of each one of the things on our list. So the, 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 the step five is a very pro positive process. Because it says after we get this, you know, we get some of our greatest relief after step five. But then after we do that, this brings us to step five. We'll, we'll inventory those things. And this is why the inventory process is so important when we look at step six and seven. You know... Because there's no way we could work six or seven unless we, unless we found the value of these things in our lives. We have to know the value. And once we go through these things in our own inventory and then go through, go through them with another individual, we are burned in our mind the real value of these things in our lives. We can't fool ourselves about values. We're looking at the stock and trade. We're looking at what we trade off each day. You know I mean? This is what our lives are today. Our lives today is based on the thoughts that we trade off each day. And we alcoholics, he says, we got some unsellable goods. We got some stuff won't nobody buy. You know what I mean? Nobody buys into that but us. And we, each day, my life is based on the thoughts that I produce. Um, you know, I always walk around waiting for some good luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I said, wait for my ship to come in. My pier hadn't been built yet, you know. <coughs> but what are the thoughts that we trade off each day? And if we, if we, if we went through, we didn't know. Because we hadn't inventoried our stock. To me. 
After we inventoried our stock, we talked it over with another individual. Now we're ready to go back in business at six and seven. You know what I mean? We're ready to open the store up. You know what I mean? We're ready to talk about, you know, what, we, what we're going to hold back and what we're going to, and this is what six and seven is all about. What am I willing to let go of? What am I willing to let go of? And I know that, you know, and as we look at, and we can only grow based on that fact, by the way. Everybody wants to grow. Everybody wants something good, but nobody don't want to get rid of nothing. <laughs> Everybody wants something good. But we, you know, we're talking about if you're 100% there, and I, it's like I woke up this morning. Um, when I wake up in the morning, this thing comes on. I mean, it's full. I mean, it just comes, boom, you know. And it's on. And I don't have no empty spots all day. You know, like how people say, well, I, our minds don't go blank. My mind is full all day or something. Good or bad. <laughs> right? It's for a long day. So if I want to get something new in it, in my mind, I'm going to have to take something out. Okay? And that's why I did the inventory. Because if I hadn't done the inventory, I wouldn't know the value. I wouldn't know which one to take out and which one did I need it. This is why the inventory is the foundation of this process. And by going through my inventory, I found out I had a lot of bad stock in trade. And I found out, I seen the value of the th type of thinking that I had. I see the damage and process in my life when I read it through my inventory and analyzed it. So now I should be willing to uh, let go of it. And then my book says that, you know, sometimes it says all through these steps, there's prayer in each step. No, it's not a do-it-yourself thing. It says we ask God to help us be willing. You know, we... We know that the alcoholic is not, we, we are strong-willed individuals. But we ask God to help us be willing. So in step six, and I think step six and seven is really the two twos. It looks to me, I, I kind of see, you know, it don't, we don't need a lot of instructions for step six and seven in the big book. It's just two paragraphs, two short paragraphs in the book. And I probably, the reason we don't, they are not really uh, uh, when we look at them as twos, they are kind of crude twos. They're sort of like a pick and a shovel. You know, I go to, you go to a hardware store and buy some of them fancy twos. They give you some instructions, but I ain't never seen instructions on a pick and a shovel. <laughs> I mean, you, you're just supposed to know how to use that thing if you buy it, you know. And there ain't no easy way to, and it's a simple, but it's very simple, but they're very hard. And this is what steps six and seven are. It's where we really, Bill said it in 12 and 12, this is where we separate the men from the boys. This is where the quality of life is. And I think that's what's so, fan, so, so great about Alcoholics Anonymous, that we in the program, we all remain our own individuals. We are in kind of, we, we're individual people and personalities, and that's great. Because each person can work to his degree, and each person, can, each, each person has his different desires and wants in his life. Okay. And when you come to AA, you see all type of people. If some people choose to work one way, another different way. And this is a, all of them are right. You know, we got all kind of people in AA, all kind of different quality, quality of their lives. And they are all, it's a, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no standard in AA. So we got some people in AA that's happy and you see them smiling all the time. They got a sparkle in the eye and we see a few of those people around. And we see some people in AA that's kind of mediocre. Some days they're pretty good and some days they ain't, you know. And we see some people in AA that you'd like to buy a drink. You know, they really, <laughs> they look so miserable. It looks so miserable. You say, hey, man, I'd like to buy you a drink. Yeah. But each and every, he's got his right, this, he's got his right to be that way. You know, if he wants to be a grouch, that's fine. You know? And I have no reason to criticize him because he's all right. That's what he wants. This is the way he chose to work. He chose to work to that point. See, I don't know where that man started. Uh, so each and, of us, each and one of us has these two tools to fashion our lives. And what this is all about, the step six is what are we willing to let go of? You know, we've got to create some room. You know, this program is 
all through the program, if we looked at the steps, we hear people saying, you got to get something, you got to get something. I would like to look at it a lot different. You know, the steps say, take away, remove the things from me which are objectionable. It says, take away my difficulties. The steps all talk about removing things from our lives. And we can remove things from our lives, and they will be placed with something that is the opposite. And it's all up to us. What are we willing to let go of? You know, God had this covenant with man, and, and God's not going to come in and take anything out of our lives. He's not going to come and force anything. What are you willing to let go of? And he'll replace based on what you're ready to let go of. It's just simply what step seven is all about. You know, God will put no more in than you can take out. And that's your life. And he respects us. His, he respects, he will not cross that line. You know, and I, I, I had a lot of problem with that. You know, if you don't take an inventory and you don't know the step of, if you don't know really what you need, if you haven't seen the values, you can't really work step six and seven. What I hear a lot of people take, they think that you can just go up and God at step six and seven and say, fix me up. And he said, well, what do you want to fix? Well, just give me the twenty nine ninety five special, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he don't, he's, he's, he's a Pacific guy. You know what I mean? He wants to know. What are you, you know, he, don't, he, doesn't ask, he talks about your prayers. He talks about the demon. What are you willing to let go of? And step six is these things, are, as we let go of these things, then we ask God to remove our shortcomings. And I actually, we look at, we can look at step six. It's real simple. Step six. And seven, he says, when you work one, you have worked the other. And they do work, in a way, as twos. Because as we give up things on this side, as we give up things on this side, we find out that we can grow on this side. As we give up some of our shortcomings, we find that it can be placed by the opposite. And, it's all, and we have seen the damage and effect of these things. We've seen how they destroyed our lives. We've talked these things over to other people. So now we should be willing to let go of some of these things so they can be replaced with the positive things in our lives.